Hi, my name is Ron Johnson. I'm a life coach, and today's a seminar, virtual seminar on do you accept yourself? So those that don't know me out there, I'm a certified professional life coach, and what I do is I help people that are tired of where they are, that are stuck in a situation they wish to be better and do better, because I have been there. We all wish we could be better in a sense that we're in a current situation in which we could change this current situation, but we're feeling stuck, and how do we go around that? So today, myself, Ron Johnson, and special guest, Gloria Nail, is going to be on meditation today, so we can get centered, feel better, and we can start. So Gloria, take it away. All right. This is Gloria. Thanks for having me today, Ron. And um, we'll get started. You ready? I'm ready. You ready. All right. Let's go. Let me start this. So go ahead and um, just be comfortable where you are. You can sit down. You can lie down if you want. Um, just be in a comfortable position. And let's get started here. Go ahead and close your eyes. You can start to progressively relax. Go deeper into relaxation. And now I ask you to begin to invite stillness into your mind. Make the choice to be willing. To be present. Willing to be at peace with your thoughts. Willing to surrender. Your thoughts feel like they're getting louder. Let them be. Your thoughts will always be there. You must be willing to notice them and let them go. To let your thoughts go, anchor yourself in your breath, following the inhale and then following the exhale. Allowing the breath to be as it is and allowing it to center you.
Now begin to imagine or picture a big, beautiful sky. Imagine this big, beautiful sky filling up the space in your mind. And see your thoughts as dark gray clouds that pass through this beautiful big blue sky in your mind. Notice how the clouds move around the space in your mind, making it hard to see this big, beautiful sky. Feel what it feels like to have this dark, gray, gloomy sky in your mind. Continue to come back to the breath. Come back to the breath as you observe these clouds move throughout your mind. Letting the breath be easy and be simple. As you keep coming back to the breath, notice what the clouds in your mind look like now. Are the clouds still dark and gray or are they begun to soften and separate? Notice how you feel. You may be at ease. Maybe peace is flowing through you. Simply just notice. Allow your thoughts to come and go in your mind. Small clouds pass through that beautiful sky. And notice that the thoughts aren't as important anymore. Notice that these clouds continue to fade as you continue to breathe in and out. Eventually, you will see the clouds completely disappear. Your mind, it's clear. You'll feel relaxed. You'll feel at ease. Nothing is standing in your way. Thank you.
confident that everything in your life is in your control. And that you always have a choice. Continue to breathe in and out. you now to bring to your mind your vision for your life. What is it that you want to create while you're here? What is it exactly that you want in your life? Begin to imagine and picture yourself living your vision right now. What are you being in your vision? Are you being generous, driven, loyal? That one word or phrase represents you, who you are being as you live your true vision and purpose on this planet. Whatever the first word that comes to your mind, allow that word to represent who you get to be. Begin to breathe in this word and breathe out this word. Feel this word become ingrained in every single cell in your body. See yourself being this word. This is who you are. And this is who you will always be. See this word once more in your mind eye. And releasing this word to the universe. Knowing that this is ingrained in who you will be. Begin to deepen the breath, slowly bringing in awareness into your body. Moving and shifting 
your fingers and your toes. When you are ready, rubbing your hands together, generating some heat between the palms. Bring your palms to your heart. With your eyes closed, say I love you and say your name. Flooding your eyes open when you're ready. Take your time transitioning back. And remember, you always have a choice. That was good. How was it? It was amazing. Yeah? I felt a deep calmness. I felt just everything going away. I felt relaxed. I felt centered. I felt more engaged with my plan as my future. And knowing that, I like that at the end, you have a choice. And now I know I have a choice. I'm going to make my life the way I want to make it because I have a choice. Yes. So always um, that one part, that's the part that I really, really love the most. The last two things were I asked you to do this and just kind of look down with your eyes closed and just kind of say, I love you because you, you love yourself. You're all that matters. And then that you, you have a choice. That, like that makes me like emotional every time because I really feel it right here. Um, what came up for you in the meditation? Uh, just first, when you close your eyes, a lot of things come up because your mind is still going about everything and anything. But what came up for me was the fact of what I want for my future. What came up for me is that this would be a great meditation to do before you go to sleep. I bet I'd probably fall faster asleep. So that's something, I like the music, I was very calm. It's something I should practice daily. So I should do it myself because that will allow me now to center and really focus. Because we have so many things going at one time, you can't focus on anything. And you try, then you try to decipher, okay, which one's more important, you focus on that one. But a lot of things as far as my emotions are just relaxed. Just, it almost feels like you're falling into a deep sleep. Like I thought I was gonna fall into a deep sleep just immediately. I was really, really relaxed. And I thought about the clouds and what came to mind when I, I visualized, because part of visualizing meditation is I saw the sun rising. As sun rises in the sky higher and higher, it shines brightly over everything, right? So as it goes higher in the horizon, it shines more. And it was really, really good. And that's how it was able to take away those clouds, take away the darkness, take away all that. So now my mind is free to do whatever I want. I'm glad. I'm happy. I'm happy you feel that way. Um, is there something that while you're there in your deep thoughts that you presently feel that you're attached to? You know what I'm attached to in meditation? Obviously, uh, the really, uh, reality is this. I'm attached to we have to make money to survive. So attachment there is still there. But when I held my heart and myself i felt everything be okay what, what, what did that attachment feel like in your body the attachment feels like a, an ever going treadmill you got to go fast you got to go hard you got to go fast you got to go hard you got to keep running and it's because you have um i read this morning with my book i have the eye from what nothing is hidden and really describes the reason why all of this um let's say consciousness happens because we inherently want things. We inherently want that. And that if we don't have it, we won't feel happy. We're entirely those things don't mean anything. Financially, most of the time you're okay. Do you really need those things? No, you don't. You're okay. But because we're attached to this, this overwhelming desire to have now, because if I have it now, it'll make me happy. That's where it comes more suffering. Yeah. And, and a lot of the times too is sometimes you really – you overthink things, right? We overthink things sometimes. Mm -hmm. We know we'll be okay. 
but we like to kind of think far ahead sometimes and, and we're ahead of ourselves at times. We don't take the time to sit back and just kind of think what we have right now that we're going to be okay. Right. And okay. that's, that's what stresses us out most of the time, you know? Um, but now what did it, what does it feel like to be grounded and centered in your body? More energy. Yeah. More energy. I have more energy to do more things. I feel like, okay, I could I have more energy versus, oh man, I'm tired. And I wish I could relax. Now I feel relaxed. Yeah. There's a the freedom, more space in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I love about, um, you know, when I discovered meditation, um, it, you know, it does work. And, and that's what I love about it because I think, you, you know, in the last months or so, we were just kind of, we get caught up. And then we, our mind just kind of gets crazy and you know, we're just kind of all over the place. And then I discovered meditation. It, help, it helps us just be at ease and be at peace, our mind being at peace, you know? And then like what you said, sometimes just taking that step back to really figure out what do we really want? You know, we're so caught up with, I want to do this, this, and this, and this, but what is it that we really want in life? What, what do we really want? We need that one to focus on anything. If we just take a moment and a time for ourselves like this, it'll come to us. Yeah, it's very important. And guess what? It was only 10 to 15 minutes. And 10 to 15 minutes, everybody has yeah. time for themselves. Because now I feel my mind is free right now. I feel light on my toes. Right. And you feel more yeah. energy. Like the energy is different. You're, it's just, the energy in your body is so much more different after. And like we said, it could just be like 15 minutes. Just that 15 minutes of your time just sitting there, just relaxing and just kind of clear everything. It just, it just does something to your body and most especially your mind. Yeah, that aura changed in me. I feel different. Yeah. Good, good. I'm glad it did. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me here and, and, and allowing me to, to practice this um, with you. Anytime. You know that. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss today's topic. Do you accept yourself? So we're going to do something a little bit different where you're going to coach me. Do I accept myself? Yeah. All right. That sounds good. So let's get started on this one. Yes, I'm ready. Exactly what your tap topic is about. Do you accept yourself? <sighs> the honest truth is I accept portions of myself, which are larger now. Let's say if 100% is whole, I accept 70% of myself and 30% I wish I could be better at. Why? I think... No, I know why. I know why because we all have certain flaws. And the flaws can be comparison to somebody else. So you see someone that's good, let's say my flaw is writing, right? I wish I was a better writer. So I see someone write this really great three or four paragraph essay or post or a two a one paragraph uh, post on social media. It's like, oh, I wish I could write it that good. And it's taking me, I'm almost there, but it's taking me a while to accept, okay, great. I may, may, I may not be um, good at this, like I compare, because the only time you don't accept yourself is to compare yourself to something else. So mm -hmm. for me, it's, did I accept myself, the fact that I may not be good at something compared to somebody else? And now I'm realizing, okay, I may not be able to write as good as they can. Well, first of all, I'm thinking they wrote the first time, I'm 100%. That's obviously assuming they did, but most of the time you write things down, they go back to edit it, they write that again, they edit it again, they find the final version. And see, our, our body, because I know I'm good, bad at something, right? The way we describe it as being bad at what we've been told, I inherently now want to focus on making it better. But now I'm accepting the fact, I may not be good at it right now, but I will get there one day better. I'm progressing getting better at writing. No difference than two years ago, doing live videos or putting myself out there on social media, uh, with Facebook, with coaching, it was so fearful. It would take me 20 minutes to shoot a video that was one minute long. Now I can do a video and not worried about, okay, well, my voice is sound this way. I, I still over my words. I made mistakes. Well, everybody's going to make mistakes. But this yeah. practice about doing it better, the more important, which I just realized right now, if I do this meditation, 
um, now my thoughts are free. Usually when you join um, any kind of a seminar or anything virtual, your thoughts are going like crazy in your mind what to say, and you're know, stumbling over your words versus pronouncing it correctly. So if I can understand you clearly, you just ramble on, you're like, what did he or she say? So now I'm free. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, comparing, comparing yourselves and comparing ourselves to others, it's, as you know, it's completely normal. It happens all the time. I think it's part of our nature. We can't help, but sometimes compare ourselves to somebody on, on something that they're doing. It could be something that we're, what we're doing right now, like you in the fitness world, you know, you, you can't help, but sometimes compare yourself to others who's in the same industry as you, you know, and, and, you continue to just want to get better and better and better. But when you are comparing yourselves to others, what did that do to you? Oh, when I was comparing myself to others, oh my goodness. Um, I couldn't get loose. It was a constant trying to, to strive after the win. It means I was trying to constantly keep up with everybody else, what they're doing. So this person did something, okay, I gotta do that. Okay, someone else did something else, okay, I gotta do that. This person did a third thing, I gotta do a fourth thing. I gotta, I gotta do all these things based upon what I think is success. See, how we have success designed for us is what each, so how we design success for us is based upon what we think success is. So when I see someone do something great, I think they're successful at it because I wish I had the same success. So I'm only comparing myself based upon someone else's success, but I never asked myself, which we all should be doing, what does success mean to us? Mm -hmm. right? It could be having the best education. It could be having the best marriage. It could be having the best relationships. But that did not help me at all. Actually, comparing myself to others made me spend more money going nowhere. Did it? It made me constantly spend money on uh, let's say I need to get the best camera. I need to get the best mm -hmm. lighting. I need to get the best software. I got to have someone come out and shoot it for me. I got to edit it. I got to do all this stuff because I'm thinking that would bring me success and happiness. Uh -huh. That's more, more, more or less. The, the reality is the more success you have, the more happiness, which is a context of what you give success and a context where you get happiness. So more I got what I thought was success, the more I thought I would be happy. But when I was comparing myself to what other people were doing, I got less success, which I became less happy. So when you thought at that moment that you were, you were going to have, be happy and spending money for, for your business, it'll make you happy and then you know it'll, you'll be successful. When you actually accomplished that and you got it and you met it, you weren't happy. No, well, because remember, I'm, I'm still comparing somebody else. So I, I did the same thing he did. Like he only got five likes, give me the example. So I only got five likes. He got 1,000. How can I get the same likes? It's the same exact thing. Why can't I get that? And when you were doing that, how does that serve you in terms of um, who you are and you, who you want to be? See, let's, let's backtrack. I didn't know who I was at all. Mm. See, that's why I said 70, 30. I had no idea who I was and what I wanted and where I was going. It's like the blind lean the blind. I knew where I was, so, so by me just doing that constantly, all it did was make it more uncomfortable for me because I expect that the same exact thing, follow the same process, I should have the same outcome. And it doesn't equate that way. I had no idea what their why is in life. I have no idea what they're after. But for me, it made it where if I did that, I would achieve their level of success. But I don't know what their success is. I can only define my success. So I always, we always inherently want to, and I always start compare ourselves to others. And that's where do you accept yourself? Because comparing yourself to others always proves to be, if I compare myself to X, I do X, what someone is doing, I would thus achieve more happiness for myself because it, they, they have a greater satisfaction for life. Mm -hmm. What I start realizing, I had no greater satisfaction for myself. I had no great satisfaction for what I want to do because I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And that's where people make the mistake is you don't know what you want to do. So if you don't know what you want to do because you compare yourself to somebody else, 
you really don't accept yourself. And by not accepting yourself, you don't have enough energy to find you how to accept yourself. So you spend your lifetime trying to think, if I just do, I will finally find it and you never find it at all. Who do you want to be? I mean, what, hmm. what experiences do you want to create? If at that time, you didn't accept yourself, 70, 30, right? Is what you're saying. Yeah. Who, who do you want to be? I guess as human beings, we always want to, it's a good question though. As human beings, we always want to, the best way to obviously get somewhere is to compare somebody else because they, whatever they do, you can do the same thing. Because you're not changing a formula, you're changing how you're doing something. I used to always want to, I want to be a motivational speaker for years. And that's why I'm transitioning out of the fitness industry and going towards coaching, mental coaching, helping clients. Because we all face what I'm facing right now. It's just now I'm, I'm upfront about it. I once wanted to be the motivational speaker because I look at uh, Eric Thomas, right? I, I listen to a lot of his videos for years when I was competing for shows, getting me motivated. I look at Tony Robinson. I look at Jim Rome. I look at Les Brown. I look at all these great uh, Simon, I forgot his last name, all these great people out there and what they're doing. But now what's giving me greater success and who I am is that I'm going to do what, I'm, what makes me happy first. I'm going to do the things in this world that I want to see to change. So to be successful, you have to become the change you want to see. So I'm become the change I want to see in the world. Because for me, when I just go out there and I can help people, I can give them great success, it gives me greater success. I get what I want. Because I don't want to be an impact in this world before I die. When I die, um, I have no idea. Nobody knows. But right now, I want to achieve the maximum amount of success I can by helping people, knowing they have a choice, which you say in meditation, and knowing <laughs> they can make a greater success for their life by themselves. Now, better way to sum everything up. My daddy used to always say, my dad used to always tell me, son, when I get old enough, I'm going to do travel, I'm going to do this, this, this. Okay, well, he, we're all going to age, and time does pass. He never did none of that. So he never had a specific time he wouldn't do anything. He said, well, I'll wait, I'll wait. And wait goes one year, it goes 10 years, it goes 20 years, it goes 30 years, it goes 40 years before you know it. Something can happen in life, he passed away, he passed away early in his life. So for me, after watching him pass away, I said, I'm going to do things in my life now because if not now, when? Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. determine that, that point. So I do it now because when, I'm not for sure. And if you put it off, when will it happen? It won't. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that. If not now, when? Because then you also end up having one of those um, what if? You end up living that kind of life in the back of your mind and say, what if I do this? What if I do that? Or what if I could do this or not? But you'd never really know unless you really do it. Yep. You wouldn't know what it's like and what the experience would be like. So what you're doing is taking a chance at some point also in your life, because um, otherwise you'd never really know. You wouldn't have really known what makes you happy if you're not taking this chance of transitioning from the health and fitness coach to becoming a life coach. Because yes. you've obviously realized and noticed that this is where your heart is and this is where your happiness is more um, with um, becoming a life coach and an inspiring life coach. Yeah. And so then the question I go back to is, you know, accepting yourself. If then you didn't know what you wanted and you didn't know if you've accepted yourself then what about now that you're walking through this journey of becoming a life coach and you're transitioning to from being a fitness coach to a health uh, a life coach how do you accept yourself now i accept myself now because i'm enjoying the process everything i'm doing right now i'm in line with what i want to do what i want to do so no one made yeah. choice for me. It wasn't because of money or I want to do this. I'm accepting myself because I bring something different. Mm -hmm. 
right? Uh, let, let's let's put the the elephant in the room there. I'm um, a black male, and you don't see any black male coaches. It doesn't matter for me about race. So I'll put that out there, but you don't see it. You've seen a male life coach, which you really don't see too much, and you're bringing someone that um, came from a broken family, was molested, had went through all these self-esteem issues, fine relationships, bad relationships, good relationships, friends, no friends, trust issues, scared to love. Now I was able to fix those because everything that I witnessed, I forgot to mention, had bad credit, filed bankruptcy. I mean, the list can go on and on. I live within my experiences because my experiences is what give me the power to accept the fact, hey, I, I had errors. I, I was flawed, but I was able to correct it because now I have more information. And now not only do I have more information, I know specifically how to fix it and I go after it. I mean, heck, I forgot to mention one last thing. I was married. I, I got married 21, I've been married for 13 years, technically, I quote that, whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I'm finally on the verge of getting a fine dissolve only because I finally said, okay, I want to do this. I put the effort in what I want to do. So the idea is in order to accept yourself, I want to really, really accept yourself. You got to realize you are perfect and beautiful the way you are right now. And the only time you will create more suffering for you is when you compare yourself to other people. So we constantly compare yourself to other people you are creating your own internal suffering. So if you know that this is creating suffering, it's hurtful, why would you want to do that? No, you have a choice. You have a choice to think thoughts. You have a choice to think whatever you want or do whatever you want. But we, would you constantly put that on your shoulders as a burden? No, you wouldn't. As someone's going to punch you in the face, you would duck if you see it coming. So inherently, would you go out there and knowing that, look at these videos, whatever you're doing is creating more havoc? No. Because it doesn't free up the space in your mind. We talked about the meditation, freeing up the space in your mind. And that's now I accept myself because I am perfect, I'm wonderful, I'm amazing, I'm beautiful where I am. Now, what everybody said before I am, no, can make everybody happy. But I can make myself happy first. Because if I make myself happy, then I emit energy around myself like an aura. Everybody that wants to be attracted to me as far as energy wise. I will attract that. Anybody doesn't resonate with me, I repulse that. So it's two way street. I don't want that negative energy in my life, anyways. <laughs> so I repulse right. that energy. So it's much better now. So I said, myself one hundred percent. Now, do I have a stumble and do I make mistakes and stumble, whatever? Yeah, but mistakes are just learning. Now it's it's true um, that how are you going to help others when you yourself are not happy, or you yourself you know haven't accepted yourself? So before all that, you have to have a have accepted yourself and you're happy in order for you to be able to help others and understand and listen without judgment. Right. Yes. So let me, let me just take it back a little bit here. Um, I, I missed this one question I wanted to ask you. So throughout this, you know, this transitioning and this journey, did you expect anything at all? And what did you expect? Last time I expected anything was when I first joined IPAC. I expected to join this program and, you know, a few months, I'm a life coach, it'll make some tools and make some money. So anything that, which is a good point to bring up, I wasn't attached to any outcomes or expectation. I was attached to only the process. The process is in, you know, the doing and knowing what I want. That's the only thing I'm attached to. Okay. Um, so now, do you feel now that you have accomplished something oh, right now? Majorly, yes. But the work's not done. No. I feel I've accomplished a lot going. First biggest thing was accomplished is the more self-esteem you have and more, more self-esteem and more confidence you have, the more satisfaction in life. So I was able to build my self-esteem, able to build my confidence first. Because if you don't help yourself, you can't help anybody else. So once I build those to a higher level, I gave me more satisfaction, which propelled me now to live with my purpose and live with my future. And I can see that in you and I can hear it in your voice, the confidence, the yeah. happiness that you really truly are living your purpose and that you love what you're doing. And this is in line of exactly what you want 
and I could, I yeah. could, I could hear it. I could hear it in your voice. It happens. You can feel it. You can feel it immediately through, through the, the zoom. Feel it. You can feel it. The <laughs> vibration. I can. You're giving me the goosebumps just speaking and talking about it. You know, I, I could feel it. They, you know, this is something that you really wanted to do, and it's something that makes you happy. And I could tell that this is what's in your heart. You know, I, at first, you know, and knowing you, and for as long as I've known you, I think at first I thought, okay, fitness. You know, this is this is your world, right? And that changed. But there is a difference now, and I could see that this is more you. Um, that this is more in your heart than. You know, not, nothing against what you were doing before as a fitness instructor or as a fitness coach. That was great. And you did a great job. You know, I'm sure a lot of your clients appreciate that. What you're doing now, I think, because, you know, now you've got something to share to the world. Yep. And, and, and as a trainer. Make a, yeah, and make a better impact to the world. Um, and I feel your energy, too. The vibration going back and forth. I feel it because, because now, because I'm feeling it too. <laughs> no, the funny thing is though, it's about one important aspect here is: Have you heard the acronym or term "stroke the ego"? So when you tell me I'm in line with my purpose, like stroking my ego, because I feel good, <laughs> so I feel the vibrations. <laughs> That's really that. It was when you stroke somebody, but but you're saying exactly what we tell ourselves. Because if yeah. you don't accept yourself, so you're telling me. So most people want to test something, see if it works. Test this and see if it works. I'm not t testing life coaching and see if it works. I know it works. I accepted the fact, yes, you have to do work to make it work. You can't just say, well, I'm just going to make sure it's going to work. How? Even God says, you, you got to first teach yourself how to fish. I'll teach you how to fish, but you, then you got to fish for yourself. So right now, I'm living within my purpose. I'm in limited alignment with what I want. It's not about, I'm going to do this to achieve an outcome, which is, let's say, most people do something to achieve more money, achieve a better relationship. I'm doing this because I want to impact the world. I want to impact the people around me. Because think about it, if I can impact five people, those five people are impacted, they help five more people. Mm -hmm. Then they help five more people. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you can help 100 people. Just like mm -hmm. that, impacting, because a piece of me goes with them every step of the way. And the more people we get with a different perspective and accepting this, because the first thing is that social media, the news, the malls, uh, advertisement, they thrive on our wants, yes. right? Okay, perfect example, you know, we're going to winter time, and, but when we come out to winter time through December, we do start seeing on TV as commercials. Summertime is coming, top is down, hot looking guy, hot looking woman. Okay, that's not reality. <laughs> That's the space. Are, are you seeing the commercials that new clothing lines coming out? You got this hot guy in a nice shirt. Then you got this little hot woman bikini. Are they out on the beach on vacation, mm -hmm. right? So inherently, social media thrives on our wants. And it creates this insatiable desire that's uncontrollable unless you're aware of it. I Me, mean, I'm aware of it. But that's not what I want. You know, yeah. simple things that when I was 25, the idea be if I get a nice car, I get the girl that have the money, which after more of my work, I've realized that that is creating an opposite force and out of desire, out of want. Idea is, the idea be if I have the car, I have more confidence to get the girl. If I have the money, I have more confidence to keep the girl. It's only when I get, if I get, and all external happiness, because if I got the car, I feel more happiness. If I got the money, I feel more happiness. If I got the girl, I feel happy. Because that's what I wanted. Right. But we're proved to be, first of all, I don't care about having a nice car now anymore because I don't want the liability. I rather focus on the business. <laughs> um, inherently, while I was out there searching, searching, searching for somebody when I was 25, it got me nowhere. Third, if you help more, if you're in line with what you want, you help more people, money will flow abundantly. It will just flow. But we don't, that's when things stop. So to answer your question, Ron Johnson, the life coach, the motivational speaker, the health coach, does accept himself right, wrong, or different. And I'm gonna live the best life I know I can while I'm still alive. Because, you know, what hurts me sometimes, I talk about something personal, is when I see my mom, she's 70, right? She turned 70 last month. My dad and her are the same age. My dad died almost six years ago. She uh -huh. is still alive and she, 
because it's me I want, obviously. I want something better for her. She just like, but realize I'm still alive. I can do whatever I want. Instead, she just says, well, why don't you do this? Why well, can't? I don't do that. Why well, can't? I don't do this. Well, this reason. Okay, all these things that are stopping you, hell, you're alive. My dad is dead. Or dad, you know, her ex-husband is dead. He can't do nothing. You are still alive. You can do anything you want. Let's go for it. Maybe she's happy the way she is. Maybe she's happy where she's at. She's content, you know? If that was really, if that proved to be true, it is possibly true for her. But the vibration and what is said is yeah. two different things. Oh, I'm fine so where I am. Time. I'm fine where I am, but you know, I don't like my boss. I'm fine where I am, but I wish I make more money. I'm fine where I, I wish I'm going on vacation. You see, if you were just fine where you are, you wouldn't say, but no, you just do. Yeah. Well, I just want to say amen to that. I'm so happy. I'm happy for you. And I'm glad, you know, you've came to the point of acceptance and accepting yourself who you are and that I'm proud of who you've become, you know, and I'm glad this is where you you found what you wanted. You found something that you want to do and what you want just to make people happy. It, you know, we talked about the domino effect, right? So that's what it's going to be. It's like the domino effect. You make an impact. Whoever you make an impact on, they'll make an impact on somebody else and then they'll make an impact on somebody else. Yeah. But you, along that way, you will be there with them. Yeah. That's how you make a bigger impact into the world. So I'm... I'm I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Um, so I want to, let me ask you this one last question. I'm going to just kind of go a little deeper on this. Um, what do you want your life to be about? I mean, I know you're, you've just started walking your journey and this journey, you're going to keep going. I could see you doing that and you're still walking your journey. You're not done. But what do you want your life to be about? My life for myself has to be about peace, balance, and serenity. What that entails is I want less people around. So that's why I'm going to Washington, Bellingham, less people, because it allows me free more space in my mind. What I really want to do is I'm not, we live in California, you have this overwhelming sensational pool to make money because you have to make money to survive. I don't, I don't know if I need to make 600K a year to make it. Shit, if I made 100K a year, I'd probably feel fine. But obviously, I want to make a certain amount of money to start the same time I'm starting my life. But to be at peace, be one important thing, knowing I have the power inside myself. I don't need to wait to anything to happen to make a move or do anything I want. When, my, when I'm at peace, I will know that I am the creator of my own life. That brings me peace. I am the creator of my own life. Okay. But when you mention and you say, you know, here in California, they talk about, you know, you have to make a certain amount to, to mm -hmm. live in California, or you have to be this type of person to live in California. You have to live in a home like this to live in California. But then you go back to comparing again. So if you're mm -hmm. saying that you know what you want, you know that you, you'll be okay and you know what you could make to live off of and you'll survive and you'll be fine. So why then again go back to this is what California says, I'm not going to be that way. So there, yeah, you got me on that sense. one. There's, there, there's, <laughs> comparison, there's comparison there because I would say it's not more comparison, but rejecting what I don't want anymore. See, yes, I'm comparing two different things. Yeah, that's right. We're going to always compare and contrast. But knowing what I want and knowing what I don't want, I'm rejecting now, physically, mentally, emotionally, what I don't want. So I, I don't want that because that won't bring me peace. I want this mm -hmm. because that brings me peace. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I'm comparing is what brings me more happiness to what doesn't bring me more happiness. But yes, I am comparing. We shouldn't do that. A certain situation I'm going to. So it's, it's basically, it's just letting go of, you know what you don't want. That's so you'll it. have to let go and then move on to the next. 
That's it. You know what you want, and you know what you don't want. That's yeah. very fundamental to me, very easy. Yeah. It's just, um, this just remind me, reminded me of what um, happened yesterday. So I, I have two boys. I brought them to the mall. My youngest one wanted shoes. So he already had in mind what type of shoes he wants um, because we are going back on campus for school. So I said, he needs shoes for school. So he knows what kind of shoes he wants, the style, the type, whatever. And we, I bring him to this store. And then so he finds the shoes. We're waiting for the guy to bring the shoes out, you know, of his size. Then I started looking around the store and I look at all the other styles of the shoes and I showed it to him. I said, oh, what about this one? What do you think of the shoes? What do you think of that one? And he starts looking. He's like, ah, yeah, that's kind of nice. And then he's like, ah. Then, you know, we talked for a little bit. And he and I'm just like, what's the matter? What's wrong with you? Because he started in his sweat. He said, you're stressing me out. And I said, how am I stressing you out? <laughs> he said, because I already know what kind of shoes I want. I already know what I want. But yet, when you start showing me all these other ones, then it makes me think, well, yeah, she's right. That one's kind of nice. But I want this one. Then that one is nice too, what she's talking about, but I want this one. So here comes older brother. Older brother says, you know what? You know what you want already. So stick with what you want. You already made a choice. That was your choice. All you got to do is look at her and say, yeah, that shoes looks nice, but this is what I want. And then she comes out, she comes up to you again and shows you another pair of shoes. And she tells you the same thing. Then turn around and tell her again, that is nice. I like that shoes, but this is what I want. <laughs> so it was... You know, the stress there was you start comparing because you start mm -hmm. seeing something that you think is better, or maybe that is nice, but you already know what you wanted. So why again having second thoughts? And then so then the older brother then made him kind of talk him into, you, you have a choice. You already made the choice of what you want. So just stick to that because is that what's gonna make you happy? Yes. So then we get the shoes that he really wanted you know, be, just regardless of what I was showing him. And I explained myself, I was just showing it not because I wanted you to like change your mind. It was more of like, I think this is nice. What do you think? Maybe, I don't know. I wasn't thinking unconsciously. Maybe I wanted to change his mind. I don't know. But, you know, that just just going back to kind of what you're saying, just reminded me of that. Yeah, because you want something else you like better. He, he, he didn't like that shoe that you liked. Because yeah. you kept showing him what he, what you thought would be better for him, what you thought would be better for him, not what you wanted better for yourself. And maybe at one point in your life, you thought, you know, here living in California and living around here, you know, this is what would be better for you. But although, you know, you were born and raised here, so you've already pretty much lived here your whole life and you've already seen it and what it's like. Um, you're ready for something different, something new. And as you've gotten older, you realize this is not what's for you. That's not. I have a choice. Yeah. You know what? One last thing I gotta say. So it's funny you bring up kids. So um, I, I have two boys, and they're they're fifteen and sixteen. Um, and one of them sent me a message the other day. Um, and obviously, I pay them child child support. I take care of um, um, their other things they need. Um, he says, "Hey, can you send me money for? Can you send me some money? Hey, Dad, can you send me some money for a haircut?" Now, I don't care about the haircut. So I didn't respond back right away. It took me almost 24 hours to respond back. Because I want to mm -hmm. think about what I want to say and if I should say it. Because what happens when I always hear, hey, I want this. Can you do this for me? It's not what I really want. I explained to my son. I was like, hey, son, I have no problem sending you money for a haircut. But I don't want to be a situation where all I'm doing is sending you money. I like to have a better relationship with you rather than just be a person that sends money. And sponsors are cool. The sponsors, yes, sir. But I, I guess he was trying to say, okay. But that's, that's the thing is, is that, okay, him asking for money all the time, so I start rejecting that. So it doesn't feel well. So I have to think about how with the process and proceed forward. So I said, yes, son, I have a problem paying for your haircut, but let's make it clear that I would like to build a better relationship with it. What do you think? Because I want to be, I need money. That's all I hear from you. Oh, I need this. I said, I need that. I'd rather have an ongoing better relationship. So yeah. this is a great virtual seminar. I enjoyed it. We're going to have another one October 25th. Meditation, mm -hmm. bring it again. I loved it because I'm more free mm -hmm. in space in my mind now. I'm more free in my thoughts. So this will be 
our meditation. This be sorry, doesn't conclude our virtual session. And thank you for being a special guest. It was awesome having you on here, and I will have you again the twenty fifth. So, do you have any last words for our audience out there? The only last thing I have is um, I go back to um, how important it is to stay centered. You know, if you start feeling a certain way and you start feeling, and because I'm saying this because this is what's happening right now, you know, in a weird situation we're living in right now, in a weird times, um, we get caught up and we start stressing over things that we shouldn't be. And, you know, the only thing I can say is to just um, take a step back, relax, and just, just center yourself, kind of like what we did today because you will feel the difference. You'll have more energy. The energy will be different. That's, that's pretty much it. Thank you. And again, thank you for having me today. I had a great time. Thanks, King Gloria. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.